Hey, how's it going everybody? So I am starting to teach myself ASP.NET MVC and I figured as I learn and as I you know go through this this journey myself I'll share with you guys and share what I've learned and what I plan on doing. I'll probably make a demo application. Um, I always think that's the best way to learn a new language is to just go out there and make something. I think what I want to do is I want to make like if you go to tesla.com and you go and you choose your car, right, I want a Model 3 and I want this, uh, and you fill out your info, we're going to make something like that, hopefully. That's that's my end goal. If you like this kind of content, also, I, I want to ask you to hit subscribe. It means a lot to me, and I appreciate all of the subscribers recently. And I went to Microsoft.com, and uh, I wanted to find a good definition of the Model View controller pattern. Um, and this sentence right here kind of sums it up. Using this pattern, user requests are routed to a controller, which is responsible for working with the model to perform user actions and or retrieve results of queries. The controller chooses the view to display to the user and provides it with any model data it requires. So think of the controller as the middleman. It'll query from the model, or maybe it'll query a database which will fill a model, and then decide, okay, well, what view are we going to send the user to? Maybe they click on a link and they want to go to a different view. Uh, it'll do all of these different things and display the view. So the first things first, this is going to be a pretty simple first video. We're just going to make sure that you're all set with MVC. We're going to create a new page and pretty much just set up our application. So I have Visual Studio installer here. I'm using Visual Studio Community 2019. It's free. It's what I recommend you get because you don't have to pay for it, obviously. And then you'll hit modify here. And then these are all of the different, they call them workloads that you can download to be able to build different applications. So for instance, I've used WPF in previous videos. Shout out WPF, go check it out. And I had to install this .NET desktop development because it came with everything I needed. And that's basically what we're going to do to run ASP.NET you want to choose web and cloud and then ASP.NET and web development. And that will come with everything you need to start making your own MVC app. So once that's installed, I'll go ahead and launch this. And here's all my, you know, I have a problem. Um, I keep creating solutions of projects and I, <laughs> I tweak it maybe a few things and then I just let it sit and I need to start deleting all of these different solutions that I, I never plan on using ever again. But anyway, we're going to create a new project. And then I really don't like how they change this, but let's see what our options are. We want we want web, so let's change it to web. And we're not doing ASP.NET Core. Maybe we'll do that in the future um, so I can learn the difference. We want a, actually ASP.NET and it'll look like this, ASP.NET Web Application. And the only reason it's on the left here is because I've used it recently. So let's just type ASP.NET. There, with the .NET framework. That's the one we want. So we'll hit Next, and then we can name this whatever we want. So let's call this YouTube Demo Web App. And that's where it'll go, that's fine. Um, we'll use 4.7.2, that's cool hit create, and it should ask us, okay, what new ASP.NET web application do we want to make? Do we want to make an empty one, web forms? I, I believe web forms is an older version of creating a uh, web application. MVC, which is what we want. I do want to learn how to create a web API in the future as well, so we'll look at that sometime. But right now we're worried about MVC, so I'll have that highlighted. And I don't think we want anything else. Um, yeah, I'm just going to keep this and then hit create. And then what it'll do is it'll make our basic scaffolding, our basic application. And we'll run it, we'll look at it, we'll look at a few different things that I've learned. Um, and uh, make our own page, a different page if you will, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So hopefully you can see everything okay. I, I have gotten comments in the past, I got a 1440p monitor so everything looks good for me but if you're viewing it on a smaller device I try to zoom in um, though I don't know how to zoom in with this kind of stuff but anyway here's our basic scaffolding and here's our solution and here's all of the uh, here's the models folder right it's gonna hold the different data models maybe we'll have a user model and it'll be like name email 
whatever else. Um, here's the views, and we'll take a look at all of this. But right now, right off the rip, we're just going to start this and check it out. So I'm going to hit, and I'm using Google Chrome. I think you can hit uh, this down arrow. Select a different browser. You can use Edge or Internet Explorer. I'm using Chrome, so we'll just hit play. All right, and it'll start up, and here it is. This might look familiar to you. It might look like a Bootstrap-esque web application. That is true because it is actually using Bootstrap. Bootstrap is thrown into uh, this web application's like basic scaffolding, as I call it. And here in the URL, you can see it's just localhost, and that's it. There's no continuation of, this is just the index. And if we go to about, you'll see it says home and about, and then contact, home and contact. Let's go back. So what I want to do is I actually want to add a different page up here with a different link. And we can call it test page, we can call it whatever you want. But I just want to show you how you can add this. And you get used to the controller syntax and the view syntax. So one thing I want to point out is this path right here. We have home and then about. And why is this significant? So if we go to our controllers folder here in the solution, our home controller, the fact that it says home controller and not play controller or test controller, that's on purpose. It's always going to be something controller. In our case, it's going to be home. And that's why we have this slash home and then about. If we look, we actually have a method that's called about and returns an action result. Okay, So if we look at this about method, and it, at the very end it says return the view. And we'd be wondering, well, what view is this? Because we can see view is in index, view is in contact, and those are the only three. But if we get on the views, we see a home again. Hopefully you're seeing a theme. Um, and inside home, we have about, contact, and index. So if they choose index and then the view, they'll actually get this CSHTML, Razor page. And we'll talk about Razor pages and things, fun things you can do with them uh, in the future. It might be a little too much in the beginner video. Let's go back to home controller. And basically what I want to do is I want to add, like I told you, another link. And if I pull it back up, I'm just going to put it right here and I'm going to call it test. Okay. So we're going to create another method here in the home controller. And we're going to call it public action. It's going to return an action result. And let's call it test with a capital T. And then inside of this, we can just return and I gotta close this uh, or stop because I'm getting these purples um, squigglies because I need to stop and recompile to do any of this. So let's uh, return the view just like that. So now if we go to the home folder and view we can actually add and we'll right click hover over add and choose view and we're gonna name it test and the rest we're going to leave empty, and all of this is fine. We'll hit add. And it'll do its thing. And here we go. This is the test view. And here in the home folder now, you can see that there's a test.cshtml. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a paragraph and say, this is our new test link. So we have a new test view. Um, we have a header, and we have a paragraph, and then we have this funny looking razor syntax. And you can think of anything that's within this as actual C sharp. It can actually run C sharp in our HTML as it's rendering it, which is nice. And we'll talk about that, like I said, in another video. I think that might be too much for a shorter intro video. But now that we have everything we need, right, we have our test in our home controller. Um, we have our test view in our home directory here and our views directory. The only thing we're missing now is putting it in that group of links at the top, right? And then if we notice, let's collapse this home directory. There's a there's a nice file called underscore view start .cshtml. And what this does is it's it defines the basic default layout of any view. And it says, well, okay, well, what's, what's the default layer or layout of any view? And in our case, it's in the views directory shared and it's called layout CSHTML. So let's find that. So if we go to views, so we're already in views, 
shared underscore layout.cshtml. This may look familiar. This is the basic, as you saw, the bootstrap stuff of the view that we were looking at. That's why every single page, if we open it back up, that's why every single view here, they all had the same thing at the top. They all had this navigation bar, and then at the very end, they all had this copyright year, and then this, this phrase, right? They're all the same. And the way that happens, we can close it now, is because they're all using this basic layout dot CSHTML, and then inside of it they have this render body, which is each one of these. Each one of these is inside that render body, where that goes. It'll replace that. So right here are the different links, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy one of these and paste. And here's a little bit of C Sharp, like I said, in our HTML. So it'll read through this before it renders, and it'll do everything it needs to do. Uh, it'll notice C Sharp, and it'll do something with that um, before it actually renders the HTML for the user to look at. So here's a method action link, and you can see it takes in a string for the link text. So what is the link going to say? In our case, I just want to say test page. Okay, that's the first parameter. The second parameter is the action name, and the action name for us is just going to be test. So it changes to test, because it's in our home controller as test. And then our controller name is home. It's in our home controller. So that should be everything we need to do to serve that up and to put it in that navigation bar there. And now you can see on the very right we have a test page, so if we click that, here's that view that we created with the header and it says this is our new test link and you can see it still has the same navigation bar, it still has the same footer as the rest of the views. So we don't have to rehash this code in every single view which makes it really nice. Alright, so that's going to do it for this basic intro video. Um, hopefully some of that made sense, if not, look over these files. Some of it may make sense. For instance, if we go to this app start directory here, you can see a route.config and here you can see Oh, here's the default page if they don't actually put, you know, slash controller name slash action. Uh, it's going to be the home controller and the index action. And that's why if we go back, we click this, you can see there's no slash home, no slash index after home. How does it know how to go to this index page? Well, it's because of this default right here. So you can look around at all these different things. Hopefully some of the things will click as you as you look at different things. And in the next video, we'll go and start creating our application. All right, so thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Hopefully you guys are excited about this little series or whatever we, we want to consider it. Um, I am, and I'll see you in the next video.